Personal story segment tonight, Governor Palin's book, Going Rogue, will debut at number one on most bestseller lists, and there's no question it'll be an enormous success. Joining us now from Los Angeles to evaluate our conversations thus far with the governor, radio talk show star Leslie Marshall. All right, now, uh, you are a liberal woman, and she's a conservative woman, so you give her a grade so far. You know, we're asking people to do that in BillOReilly.com. A to F, how grade the interview so far? Well, I have to say, I'm going to give you a B for asking questions that weren't about Levi and Bristol and her family and her husband. Um, but I, I would have to say for her, oh, I, I, I don't want to be mean, but Bill, I wouldn't give her high points because I felt in true politician form, she dodged almost every question that you answered her, uh, asked her when she was answering you. She wasn't being specific with her answers and she wasn't giving alternatives well, give me an, give me an example, to what because our I didn't get president the feeling, is doing. I didn't get the feeling she was dodging. I, think, I thought she engaged the questions. You may not like the answer, but give me, give me one question you think she dodged. Well, I think she dodged Iran, for example. Um, uh, first of all, it frightened me that she didn't seem to know that France and Great Britain were on board with sanctions against Iran. I'm glad that she knew Russia was the problem. And uh, I have to say, Bill, I agree with you on Putin and Afghanistan. I didn't hear an alternative. I didn't hear a plan from someone that perhaps might be running for and looking to me and others in America to be elected leader of the free world to lead this nation. So you thought she was too general? Uh Okay, I think that's a valid criticism, um, but nobody else has any idea, and I'm not making an excuse for the governor, but I haven't, look, Obama didn't have any solution to Afghanistan, he doesn't have any solution to Iran. So, you know, to be fair, if you're going to say uh, Governor Palin didn't have any solution, our President of the United States didn't have any solution. So, I don't know what the beef is other than maybe Sarah Palin should have one, but, you know, what say you? Obama didn't have one. Well, 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 I think, it, for me at least, and I think a lot of Americans uh, agree with me, certainly many will disagree with me too, we have to have something more concrete. This okay, may say outlandish, agree, agree but there that, are look. people we that say have, pay off the Taliban in Afghanistan. We, we should have the absolutely Taliban, the most specific policy possible to win in Afghanistan and to prevent a nuclear Iran, but we don't. So it's not just, and I, again, I sound like I'm making excuses for Governor Palin, I'm not, but I felt she was conversant with the issues. A lot of people didn't feel that she was conversant. I felt that she was conversant with them, that she knew what the problems were. Now, you're right. She didn't say, look, because I, I handled her, I handed her the, uh, the blockade, the naval blockade, which is eventually what you're going to have to do there. You're either going to have to bomb the hell out of them or put a naval blockade in, one or, one or the other. All right, one more specific criticism of the interview, Leslie. Go. Well, uh, when you asked her, and I'm glad you did, point blank, uh, do, do you feel that, you know, you're capable of, of being president of the United States? She said yes, and her answer to the why of that was, one, she has common sense. Right. Two, she reflects the values many Americans have. And three, she thinks Americans are tired of elitism. Uh, this woman has $5 million book deal before one book is sold. This woman spent nearly $800 a night in hotel rooms on taxpayers' dime in Alaska and $20,000 plus uh, to move her family around. And this woman also uh, left the throne of governor in Alaska. Uh, would she bail on us in, in, in tough times oh, or for the bigger and better fair. deal? So I thought it was hypocritical. No, I, I thought it was very fair. hypocritical. She had to make money. And she I had think to earn it money. There's nothing wrong with earning money, and she's doing it legitimately. <laughs> but she had an enormous amount of debt, 500000 piled up by people. But look, Leslie, we have you on a program because we want to hear what you had to say, and we appreciate it. Now the letters. Julie Hall, London, England. Congratulations, Bill. Your interview with Sarah Palin was excellent and increased my respect for both of you. Joe Tentler, Denver, Colorado. Bill, you were gushing over Governor Palin. Didi Aranian, Killeen, Texas. Finally, a real interview with Sarah Palin, not a love fest or a hate fest. Rhonda Pullen, Dallas, Texas. Disappointing and irritating, O'Reilly. Sarah doesn't need arrogant lectures from you. Mike Kimmel, also from Dallas. Bill, the interview was lively and informative. If Sarah and McCain had visited the factor before the election, they might have won. Dan Wise, Marion, North Carolina. Bill, or is it Katie Couric, number two? Your questions were condescending. Don Jacobson, Duluth, Minnesota. Bill, your no-nonsense interview drew Sarah out, and she has never come across better. Norm Jacob, Frisco, Texas. No one could listen to the interview and still believe Sarah is a serious presidential contender. She's folksy, but could not challenge Obama. Laura Smythe, Carrollton, Texas. 
Bill, you brought out the best in Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and now Sarah Palin. All were outstanding interviews. Well, I appreciate that very much, Laura. Tim Donahue, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Bill, you jab Sarah for using the cliche, my bad. Don't you say, what say you? I do, Tim, and I believe that is somewhat unique to the factor. Is it not? Cal Thomas, Arlington, Virginia. Bill, best interview of Sarah Palin ever. Well, thank you, Cal. I, coming from you. Roy McBroom, Spokane, Washington. Would Newsweek have put Hillary Clinton on its cover wearing shorts? Probably not, Roy. And Dane Hendrickson, Camarillo, California. Bill, I've read 17 books this year, and Bowl Fresh was the best. What's next? Pinheads and Patriots will be my next book out next September, Dane, and it'll examine America in the age of Obama.